the first thing we have to do is ask the type of adjective we're going to use. But before we do that, we have to ask the noun, what kind of? There are emotion, personality, and five senses that we can use. Those are our types of adjectives. And we put it in the state, we put it in the question, what kind of? Watch what I mean by this. We take the noun sister, put it in the question. Ready? What kind of sister? I'm going to use the context of the sentence. Would kick a soccer ball over the fence. We have to decide on the noun. Now notice, I use the whole sentence. Because if I just say what kind of sister, then the students will use any describing word. They won't think about the context of the sentence. They'll just say, nice sister. The nice sister kicked the soccer ball over the fence. That adjective doesn't match this sentence. It doesn't even make sense. That's why we want to make sure we always go. What kind of, put the dotted noun in there, and then the rest of the sentence. What kind of sister would kick a soccer ball over the fence? Then go to your type of adjectives. Do we want to use how she feels, her personality, or describe what she looks like? What would be best? The best thing. What does the reader need to have when you describe your sister? Probably what she looks like. So does she look puny and small or does she look muscular and strong? Wow, what kind of sister would kick that ball over the fence? Maybe muscular. All right, muscular. Or, or strong. Ooh, maybe strong. Or athletic. Athletic. I'm not going to use all of these. I'm only going to choose one. When I'm doing this example with the kids, I'm just going to put a, several words up there to show them how these words match, and then you can choose whichever you want, one you want. We're going to go back and we're going to read it. My muscular sister kicked the soccer ball over the fence. My athletic sister kicked the soccer ball over the fence. My strong sister kicked the soccer ball over the fence. I think I'm going to use athletic. They are going to write an adjective on their line, on their own papers. You don't want them to write three words. Just have them come up with a few ideas and then orally say them and then choose the one they like best and write it down. What if kids can't come up with language? They can't come up with descriptive language. Then I'm always, as they go to their dotted nouns and they say, what kind of, let's say a child has um, the cat jumped into the fish tank. Then what would we do? What kind of cat would jump into a fish tank? Are you going to say what it looks like or its personality? Oh, its personality. What kind of personality would a cat have if he jumped into a fish tank? Is he lazy or is he silly? Which one would match? So I always give kids two choices, one that's way off and one that's correct if they don't have the language. So that way I can give them ideas, but I'm not just giving it to them and they have to think. So we go back, I modeled to them, my sister, what kind of sister, I chose the type of way to describe, the type of adjective, we decided what she looks like, we came up with athletic. Let's read it. My athletic sister kicked the soccer ball over the fence. What kind of fence would my sister, who's really athletic, kick a soccer ball over? Would it be a short little rickety fence or a tall towering fence? Which one would make sense if she's strong and athletic? Towering, tall. So maybe I put tall here. Let me go back and read my sentence. My athletic sister kicked the soccer ball over the tall fence. I have the students go back. They're going to go to each one of their dotted nouns and they're going to decide what kind of, they're going to put their noun in their what kind of phrase and then they're going to decide what kind of noun they want. Is it going to be an emotion, personality, or five cents? And then they're going to come up with their words. As they go through this process, you're helping different individual kids as they fill in the lines on their different parts of their writing to add their adjectives. Then they go back and they reread their sentences with the adjectives in them. This is a wonderful technique to teach your kids how to add adjectives, descriptive language, to their writing after they've used the organizer, after they've orally rehearsed it and written it out, and you've actually 
taken their papers home, put dots on the nouns, given it back to them, meet with them in small groups. It's a great feedback activity. Let's do my last feedback, and that is redundant words. And this is for the redundant police. Woo, 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 redundant police, redundant police. Good writers don't keep using the same important words. So what do I do? What's my feedback? If I'm reading a child's paper that they've written out and I've taken it and I'm at school or at home and I'm correcting papers, how do I give feedback if I see the same important words used over and over again? I'm going to get a yellow pen and every time I see the same words over and over again, I'm going to put a yellow marker underneath it. Notice my, so I underline the words that are important that have been used over and over and over again. Look at what I've underlined with yellow. My dog sleeps, bed, my dog, sleep, my dog, sleep, dog, bed. The children have different important words that have been used over and over again. If I have several different ones used over and over again, underneath their writing then, what I will do is I will put what that phrase or words are. So I have my dog, I have bed, and I have sleep. So that way, I pull them out and we can brainstorm underneath, then add them back to our paper. So this is what I do with a child's paper. When I go to pass it back, I will say to the students, my redundant police kids, woo, 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 redundant police, yellow lines, yellow lines, meet me at the table. So then they come to the table and they will have the yellow lines underneath their writing. They will have keywords if there was more than one that they used over and over below their writing so they could do their brainstorm down there. I'm going to model with my paragraph here the, re the redundant police. I'm going to show them. Look how I have the yellow lines. These words are used over and over again. My dog my dog, my dog, sleeps, sleep, sleep, bed, bed. Oh my goodness, I keep using the same words over and over again. What can I do so that, woo, 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 redundant police, redundant police. Good writers don't keep using the same words over and over again. What can I do? Well, I could use a pronoun, proper noun, or a synonym. If it's pronoun or proper noun, it has to be a noun. All these words were nouns. I'm going to go back and say, my dog. What's a pronoun? Well, I know my dog's a boy, so I could use the word he. Proper noun. My dog's name is Rover, so now I could use Rover to replace my dog. Synonym. Oh, let's see. I could use pooch, pet, best friend. There's many different ways I could say that. Go to bed. What's another way that I could say bed? I could look at the word bed and I could use a pronoun, it. Proper noun, no, I don't have a name for my dog's bed. A synonym, a bunk, or a mat. Let's go to sleep. Ooh, that is an action word, a verb. We can't use a pronoun or a proper noun, but what's another way to use sleep? A synonym. So sleep, slumber, snooze. I have slumber, snooze, rest, doze, under sleep. I'm going to go back and I have dog, that's a noun. Bed, that's a noun. Sleep, what's that? A verb. So I can even add parts of speech in this lesson as well. Now that I've brainstormed all the different ways I can say these words, what am I going to do? My dog. You know what? I'm going to replace my dog with Rover because that is his name. If I'm going to use somebody's name, I should always do it at the beginning. So I'm going to replace dog with Rover. Rover sleeps in my bed. Okay. I've used bed once, that's fine. Now let's go to our next word in my sentence. Rover sleeps. Oop, sleeps is underlined. Let's go ahead. Do I want to say sleeps or do I want to use another word? Rover slumbers. Let's use slumbers. Rover slumbers in my bed. Hmm, bed. Yeah, I can use the bed. So Rover slumbers in my bed. My dog. Wow. You know what? Let's put, instead of my dog, let's put my mutt. 
My rover slumbers in my bed. My pooch wakes me up when he runs in his sleep. Ooh, I think I'll keep sleep there. Instead of my dog, maybe I should say he. He needs to rest in a dog bed. Hmm, he needs to rest on his own mat. How about we say that? He needs to rest on his own mat. We go back. Rover slumbers in my bed. My pooch wakes me up when he runs in his sleep. He needs to rest on his own mat. This is a way for you to help your kids when they use words over and over again. Underline them when you get their work back on your own. Call small groups with particular skills that they all need to address. So in this case, I would call a small group of children whose words are underlined with yellow lines, meaning the redundant police needs to be addressed here, that they are using the same important words over and over again. They come to the group, we walk through my example, my brainstorm, and then we're gonna have them brainstorm different parts of speech that they were redundant using and then we'll go back and have them replace those words, reading their sentences over and over again so that they can get rid of the same important words. We addressed capitals and stops. We addressed adding adjectives. And we also addressed children who use the same important words over and over again. This is just some ways that for kindergartners and first graders, you can have different ways to correct their papers on your own as a teacher and then call small groups with these similar skills that need corrections in different children's work. They come to the group and then you give them these lessons and they fix their papers with you there. It's easier and you'll get to more children if you can do these small group revise and edit lessons instead of working one-on-one -on -one with students. Working one-on-one, -on -one, you don't get enough feedback. You don't get enough children meeting with you. Now, we've gone through the steps to do these activities where you pulled small groups and you, the teacher, have already put the colored markings, the green light, the red light, underlining yellow for redundant words, dotting nouns. You did that to their work before they came to the groups to fix their papers. But once they hit second grade and above, they will start learning how to do this on their own. Your job in kinder and first is for them to have you assist them to fix their paper and to start having this awareness and understanding of what green light and red light is and dot the nouns and redundant police. But you're always assisting them in this revising and editing. On the following pages are little visual cues that you can show the children. On page 207 is the green light, red light visual cue. You are not teaching them these steps. Below the cue are the steps that the second grade and above learn later when they actually learn to do this on their own. I included these pages so you have the visual cues so they know we're doing green light, red light. Look, you have green light, red light on your pages and you just show this little card. I would actually cut this card out and mount it so that you can show green light, red light when they're doing it. Later when they're in second, third, fourth, fifth grade and they hear green light, red light to apply to their own papers, they will have that background that they and that exposure that they were given in kindergarten and first grade. On the following pages, you will see you have the dot the noun visual, you have the add the fancy word visual. So if you're doing that in your small groups, you would just show those visuals. These are not the steps. I included these visuals because later when they go to second and third and all the upper grades, they actually learn these steps that are below the visuals to fix their own papers. Kindergartners and first graders don't fix their papers. But I wanted these visuals to be there so that the kids can see the visuals and start to understand what they're doing when they revise and edit their paper. Good luck and I hope you enjoy revising and editing with your students.